Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Maximus Black. And I'm losing my voice. It has been a long day, folks, but it has been a good long day because we have uh, successfully held off our StarCraft II <laughs> Gold and Platinum Tournament without any huge problems. Um, it was awesome. It was a great show. Everybody loved it. We had a live stream. Everything was hunky-dory. But before I get too into the details about the tournament, I want to introduce our players. And uh, we have Point Y over here in the left position, starting as the Purple Protoss. And down here at the south position, we have Dirty Ostrich um, as the green, or green, as the orange Zerg. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long day, guys. Uh, so bear with us. This this could be one of those casts. Yeah, no, no, it, it totally is going to be one of those casts. I'm not even going to say could be. I'm going to say 100% is going to be. But we're going to give you all of the remaining energy we have. If I have to drive home and not remember a thing on the way, I will do it. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to thank everybody for showing up to the tournament. Everybody, except for a very few select people, I won't drop any names, <laughs> uh, showed up, uh, or didn't show up, I should say, and uh, we quickly replaced them with people from our backup list who were on hand and ready to go. Uh -huh. in so the people that thought that the backup list people wouldn't play, they Well, what did. do you know? Yeah, I, I told you guys that the backup would come in effect because there's always people that don't show or need to back out. And, and thankfully, there was a few people from the backup list that showed up. We put them right in. And, and we were uh, off to the races. And we were off to the races. Uh, within a half hour of when the tournament started, everything yeah. was great. Um, and for those wondering what game this is, this is an honorable mention game. We do that for every one of our tournaments. We pick out one game that, that kind of stood out amongst the others that, uh, that, that really isn't going to get casted because we only cast the semifinals and the finals. Um, I don't think that this game was streamed live on the internet, so this is going to be new for everybody. Um, so, I guess we'll get right into the game here. Um, it looks like a dirty ostrich here with... <laughs> that it name. looks like a dirty ostrich? A d dirty, dirty ostrich. That is what, a funny what name. Is, so does a dirty ostrich literally look like a dirty ostrich? Did you know that ostrich is the biggest bird known to man? I'm not convinced that that's correct. Or they lay the biggest eggs. Or is that the emu? Uh -oh. <laughs> you know what? Somebody's gonna National somebody, Geographic. Somebody's gonna correct somebody's us. Somebody's gonna, gonna look that up and put it in the comments. It's gonna, gonna be, be like you're an idiot. It's gonna be some third dark horse bird that we've never heard of before. That's actually gonna be the real uh, victor to that. Well, I can tell you who's got the biggest bird. Uh, <laughs> this is. We're gonna lose subscribers. All right. This is this. We are terrible people. All right. The jokes that we say sometimes, Just, honestly, it's no wonder we don't have a bunch of eleven-year-olds watching this constantly. The yeah. jokes that we have. Yeah, it's pretty low-brow humor. Uh, but anyway, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. We are rambling on like this because really nothing extraordinary does happen in the first like five minutes of a match unless there's like a six-pool push or something. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, we're just getting into warp gate, and a couple of stalker are going to be coming out here, and we're seeing a, a reasonably quick expansion. Four Dirty Ostrich, but nothing too out of the ordinary. Yeah, he got a, about a four-minute expansion, which is pretty good. Um, he also did a 14 pool. Uh, he now has an extractor. He's got his gas fully going, so I do uh, think we'll see some Roach here very shortly. And uh, over here, Point Y here, I'm just going to call him Point. Uh, point is on Point, actually. He is. Uh, he got a Gateway. He got a Cybernetics Core. He is getting Warp Gate. Um, he's going to pick off this Overlord. Uh, and I want to check and see what the pro production is here for these guys. So uh, Point is actually well ahead in the uh, pro production, opposed to uh, Dirty Ostrich's uh, 17 drones. So he is a, he's is in the lead for now. I don't know how long that's going to be since uh, Dirty Ostrich does have a fast expansion. Uh, he is he does have uh, how many queens? Two queens now. He's so I blocked his hell from that uh, from that overlord. from that one overlord. So that actually is going to put him back, set him back just a little bit. He doesn't have a whole lot of minerals to begin with. Now getting his roach worn and getting link speed. So quite a bit going on here now at the uh, five minute six minute mark of the game. Um, nothing overly you know exciting, but uh, both players showing pretty decent starts. Yeah, something I, I would like to point out, and I do every time I see one of those poor overlords go down in the first couple minutes of the match, is guys, if you are playing as a Zerg player, overlords are good scouting units if used properly. If you just float them on into the other person's base, they're going to get killed. And they usually hit the other person's base at around this time, or they're in the base, and then by the time, right when you need your supply the most, 
Yeah. That overlord ends up getting killed. Yeah. So don't do that. If you're going to use your overlords as scouts, just place them strategically where they're not going to get killed immediately during yeah. this time. Uh, and use your use a drone, because a drone will do just the same amount of scouting in the first five minutes as an overlord will get you any information. Uh, and here we go. We're just seeing uh, Pointy come down here uh, and uh, take over that, uh, that tower real quick to see if there's anything uh, suspicious going on. I suspect before moving down and making a bit of a push, this is the seven-minute mark. For the Protoss against the Zerg, this is a good time to attack. And as you see, a couple of Speedling going by and kind of idiotically turning around because they're just all going to get killed by the time they turn around. And uh, there they go. You know what I just realized? What did you just realize? I have been calling Point Y, Point Y, and his name's Pointy. I, I thought I had tried to tell you that like several times already. Anyways, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I just realized, and that was actually a really nice force field there. There's that force field. By uh, Pointy. Uh, making sure that these roach cannot come down and interfere with the damage that is being dealt to him right now Getting rid of that expansion and now getting up his expansion at the same time So I'm liking this trade-off really nice play by pointy. Yeah I always like uh, to see when a protoss uh, makes good use of those sentries uh, when doing something like that getting rid of uh, an expansion like that for a zerg is Incredibly crippling at this point in the game and being able to just block off that uh, that uh, Choke right there with your sentries so that you can basically go ahead and boat your business and not be bothered is something That's really really it seems like a really easy thing to do and it is But a lot of times people don't think about it They just wait until units show up yeah, and then by that time it's too late and there are other things you can do. You can wait until some of his units have come down the ramp and then block it off so you can not only kill the expansion but also kill some of his army at the same time and really cripple them. But in general, either, either way, as long as you're doing it, uh, you're doing something right and uh, you're doing yourself a big favor. And just like we saw, if you expand at the same time, it essentially uh, just flips the game completely on its yeah. head. Uh, a couple of things I want to add here. Now Dirty Ostrich getting his expansion back up. Um, one thing that I really liked about uh, Pointy's here, play here is uh, he took a lot of those probes over and transitioned them right onto his expansion. A lot of people don't do that, or they plan on doing it, and then the next thing you know it, they kind of still keep all the probes here and they actually don't move them over. We have 40 probes compared to Dirty Ostrich's 23 drones. That is massive. The economical advantage that Pointy has right now, 1,200 uh, minerals uh, per minute. Per minute opposed to 740, that's going to be huge over the next five-minute period. Oh, absolutely. Especially uh, as a Zerg player, you definitely need the economic advantage uh, against oh, yeah. the Protoss going into the mid-game. If you don't have that, you are in a world of trouble. And this hatchery, I am afraid, might go up at the exact time that Pointy is going to make his second push. Uh, he is, it looks like he is going to actually make his way down here. And this could be absolutely devastating because one basing as a Zerg against a mid-game uh, mid Protoss not the easiest thing in the world to do. No, and unfortunately for Dirty Ostrich, that expansion actually just finished just as he was coming down. That's never good. Running out all of his drones now, and it looks like he's going to be going for blood yet again. I'd like to see him put another force field right here and keep those all those units out of the base again, but it looks like Dirty Ostrich is smart enough to not even bother going down there in the first place, because if he does, they will all die a horribly, horribly painful death, and they will all <laughs> shit the bed and go to hell. Wow, that's... That's really bad. <laughs> so not only do they shit the bed, but they also go to hell just for shitting the bed. Terrible place to be. That's that's all the way bad for them. Uh, but yeah, Pointy now just gonna back out and uh, you know hang out here. He knows that he's got, uh, he knows he has Dirty Ostrich up in his base and hiding and scared for dear life at this point. He's gonna want to probably get a proxy pylon over to the right hand side, uh, Jeff. If you want to go right over, he actually up he in has here. one up here. I he know. has one there, but he it could, would be a good thing to put one. He here could as definitely well. get one there. It, it's just even faster. And at this point, if he's if he's not uh, utilizing his advantage uh, in that way, and he is at least getting them up at that proxy pylon, he's gonna find himself in trouble because that Zerg could come up and uh, have enough units to come out here and uh, take out his army. And then again, we could see a complete switch. Yeah, uh, it, it can happen in the blink of an eye in, in games like this. Uh, and it looks like he's doing another good job at attacking and expanding at the exact same time. I'm really liking this play by Pointy. And I would Walk love to off that base. If he would just put out a force. Them. Oh, there beautiful. That's what I'm looking for. Beautiful force That's field. It. Trapping half of those roach down at the bottom. Now they are all going to die. And the guys up front here are stuck by themselves. Uh, you know. Just that's be, uh, that that's was, that's my favorite Protoss play. 
It's beautiful. Against any race. It's my favorite thing to do. You you just wait. You bait them. They come halfway down the ramp. Cut them and off. And you just cut them half off. And then they're screwed. And you can just take them all out. And then uh, you can either make your way up into the base like we're seeing here. Because you know that they're absolutely crippled. Yep. Or you can back up and try and do the same thing again. But I think at this point, Pointy just figures he has it. But I don't think he does. He, not if he stays on that ramp. Well, He's going to get concave. Yep. And he needs to back up. Especially with Ling here. Ling are so good against Stalker. Especially when you have Roach behind them. Because the Stalker are so preoccupied with shooting off individual Ling. They're not paying attention to the big fat units that are in the, in the back that are putting some serious damage on them.